Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to St. Patrick Basilica. The prayers for this, this Mass this evening, to, or sorry, uh, welcome, we're celebrating our, ce <laughs> welcome to our celebration of the Solemnity of the Epiphany of the Lord. The readings for, uh, the prayers for today's Mass begin on page 162 and the readings begin on 165. Please be advised that this Mass is being live streamed and we welcome all who are joining us. In addition to your personal intention, today's Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Claire Lagroix by the Poirier family. Please stand and join in the entrance processional hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful, number 322. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. May the splendor of your majesty, O Lord, we pray, shed its light upon our hearts, that we may pass through the shadows of this world and reach the brightness of our eternal home. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have now become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, brother. We are all, of course, familiar with the story of Epiphany which comes near the end of each Christmas season. Matthew writes that after the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, wise men or astrologers from the east come to Jerusalem. These Gentile foreigners had one purpose in mind, to find the one born King of the Jews. 
On finding Jesus, they bow down and offer gifts. We also read of Herod, which almost overshadows the main story. So suspicious and insecure was he that he called a secret meeting of religious leaders for information about the time and place of the birth of this new king. With irony, Matthew says Herod claimed the exact same purpose as the wise men. He too wants to go and worship. But we know the real intent is to eliminate this rival. The worship of the pagan astrologers reminds us that Jesus, who is king of the Jews, is also king of all the world. The Magi expand our vision of whom Jesus comes to save. This is especially noteworthy in Matthew's gospel because most believe he wrote it to the Jewish community. He incorporates far more Old Testament quotes than any of the other gospel writers. So while Matthew focuses as Jesus is king of the Jews, right at the beginning, he includes this important reminder that Jesus' kingship is universal. Now, King Herod does the opposite of the Magi. He wants to narrow God's kingdom, and if it means murdering Jesus, well, so be it. At least we should give Herod some credit, because he understood something most of the, most of the others missed. Jesus is Lord. Traditionally, we focus on the gifts, reminding ourselves of the gifts that we offer or perhaps hold back from the Lord. Yet these kingly characters, Visitors from a faraway land and the one who reigns in Jerusalem ask us to look into our hearts whether or not we are attempting to restrict the kingdom or expand it. Jesus, over the next 30 some years of his life and ever since he ascended into heaven, reminds us that God's kingdom will never be a servant to anyone or anything we put in its way. God's kingdom embraces all that is ethnic, social, economic, political, and cultural. Jesus is Lord of the pagan magi, and he is Lord over all Herods of the world. He is Lord for all, Lord over all. Is it then any wonder that Paul will later write, in Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are one in Christ Jesus. And then Peter says, I should not call any person impure or unclean, I now realize that God does not show favoritism, but accepts people from every nation who fear him and do what is right. So Christmas is almost over. And we look back and wonder how different the story would have been with just a few different responses. If Mary had said no to the angel, Joseph had listened to what God was speaking to him through those dreams. If the shepherds stayed in the fields. If the Magi's remained home. If Herod has opened his heart to what was happening in Bethlehem. Catherine Doherty once suggested that we all need to do what St. John did at the Last Supper. Rest on the chest of Jesus and listen to his heartbeat. Every day the Lord will reveal himself. He will speak to all aspects of our lives, work, family, use of our time and treasure, friendships, priorities, and attitudes. 
Let's face it. The devil wants us to be bitter and fearful like Herod. Jesus wants for us the exact opposite. Listen to the heartbeat of Jesus. The heartbeat of the Lord. believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one, Holy, Catholic, and Apostolic Church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. With confidence, we bring to God our prayers. We pray with Pope Francis that the Holy Spirit helps us recognize the gift of different charisms within the Christian community, and to discover the richness of different ritual traditions in the heart of the Catholic Church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have not heard the gospel, that, like the Magi, they may seek out the truth about God with an open heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our civil authorities that, inspired by the humility of the Magi before the Christ child, they may respect God and his law in their public service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember those who are sick, those facing surgery in the coming days, and those who are in palliative care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died. Remembering especially Mark Clark, whose funeral will take place here on Thursday at 10 o'clock a.m. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God of all nations, let the radiance of your incarnate word pierce the darkness that covers the earth and beckon all nations to walk as one in your light through Christ our Lord. We are grateful for your financial sacrifices, which ensure that we can continue our ministry. You're invited to leave your offering in the baskets or the boxes available at the exits, or using your debit or credit card at the Kent Street and Nepean Street exits. Thank you for your support of St. Patrick Basilica.
fruit of the earth and work in your hands, they will become for us. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, our offerings in honor of the appearing of your only begotten Son and the first fruits of the nations, that to you praise may be rendered and eternal salvation be ours, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit, to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity, on the mem among the members of your Son, who, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Marcel, our Bishop, Ivan, his auxiliary, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly. After the example of Christ and at his command, and may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Patrick, St. Andre Bessette, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us now share with one another sign of God's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. For communion, we ask that you approach using the center aisle or the aisles by the windows and return by the aisles with the pillars. You are invited to receive kneeling or standing. Please consume immediately in the presence of the minister of communion. Thank you.
renewed by sacred nourishment, we implore your mercy, O Lord, that the star of your justice may shine always bright in our minds, and that our true treasure may ever consist in our confession of you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please bow your heads as we pray for God's blessing. May God, who called you out of darkness into his own wonderful light, pour out his kindness, kind, in kindness, his blessing upon you, and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light for your sisters and brothers. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him who the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks be to God. Please join in the recessional hymn, As with Gladness, Men of Old, number 353 in the hymnal. 353. Three.